Hey everyone, it's Rai bringing you episode 10 of the Learning Lecmod series. This video is going to be on Worker Micro. This is probably one of the most important concepts, important skills that you can learn that will bring you from a good player to a great player. I think this is how I learned to get good at the game is through worker micro and I believe it's one of the biggest things players in the group are lacking I think most players that play NQ could learn something from this video um, so let's just jump right in to what I have prepared and hopefully you can learn a thing or two um, one thing I'll say is this is not something that you can learn quickly much like the rest of Civ, this is a thing where you need a lot of reps. You need to fundamentally understand what you're doing, which takes time. And again, like I just said, you need to rep it a lot. I think there's a lot of good ways you can learn, a lot of good ways you can get examples. Um, I personally learned Worker Micro through watching Grabo. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm fairly new player to the scene but I think I improved really fast from watching Grabo not play but micro his workers I think he, he does an exceptional job because he plays so much tradition you need to put, do a good job and that's why I encourage all of you guys to play tradition as well because it forces you to get good at worker micro because otherwise you'll just be irrelevant um, so with that let's just jump into what I've prepared um, but other than Grabo, you can watch my stream. Um, in terms of other regular streamers, Abraxas has pretty good worker micro. I think he's more of a macro war player than he is a micro player, but he still does a pretty good job. And Hoy does a phenomenal job worker micro. So those us four, I'd say, are probably the best four, at least people who stream regularly or fairly regularly. Um, so if you're kind of searching for a way to get better at worker micro I would start there okay so let's start with something basic this is gonna be a tile priority list uh, I saw this a couple times um, where people were asking me like I don't know what tiles to improve first and whatnot but you know there's a concept of worker movement we're gonna get to that in a little bit but just note that worker movement takes priority um, when improving tiles in general because when you're moving your workers is the way you move them should not be spontaneous it should be well thought out it should be methodical every movement you do should have a purpose that isn't just instantaneous it should be okay it's gonna this worker's gonna move here improve this it's gonna go here chop after that it's gonna improve this tile it's gonna one move start improving this tile the one move road into this other you know what i mean like it's got to be sequential it has to be methodical but worker movement is a really good way to start thinking about okay which tiles am i going to improve and understanding why you're doing it versus anything else okay so let's just see the what list i have together so the first one's luxes this should be obvious but under no circumstance is it worth it to go unhappy generally speaking you'll see good players go unhappy all the time most of the time it's not by choice um, maybe they're settling too fast but generally speaking you should always be looking to improve your luxuries you also have good and bad luxuries as you can see I have a pretty good one at least in the early game <laughs> olives it's got zero gold but let's ignore that um, but the tile itself is pretty good it's essentially a, a wheat tile and improve wheat tile so this is a very good luxury to work um, early on because it's a useful tile when you're growing there's less important tiles like dyes where you're not going to work it anyway if you, even if you have this improved it's unlikely you're going to work the tile itself so if you have to choose between tiles work the tiles that actually are what you want to work in your city so hopefully that makes sense um, let's move on to the next one. Second one is granaries. 
The thing about granary resources is that they're very high food, typically, or the, the highest food. And we want to use these tiles to grow our cities and snowball our growth. Improving them is the best way to do that. So we have the best granary, which is bananas. And we also have my favorite, which is deer, and then wheat. And of course, you have uh, bison as well. I think following improving maybe one to two granaries, granary tiles, you know, we only really need one to two in the early game for our city improved, but we need one tile improved that is a hill or a hammer tile. I, I, I mean, even a mine, if you only have a first ring hill, improve the mine, right? But ideally, it's an iron tile, it's a ho plains horse tile, it's a hardwood tile, whatever. Improve one of these tiles. Having a tile to grow into and work for hammers is vital. Every city should try to have at least one hammer tile that's improved. Following this one hammer tile, we're going to look to improve more granaries. Um, of course, if you have an unlimited amount of granaries, you're going to have a really good game. But that's not always the case. But, you know, important to do granaries. I think the next important thing is stone. Um, because stone allows you to build one of the best buildings, stoneworks, right? Um, it's a minimum of one happy two hammers in each city that builds it. Definitely worth building. So for that reason alone, build stone. Same with stables. Stables allow... Stable tiles, like cattle and horse and sheep, allow building stables. The tile itself is not particularly strong early game. It's a 2-2. But with the building, it becomes just as good as a deer in terms of yields. So think about it like that. Think about it as if the number of yields should dictate what the priority is. So for instance, a granary without any improvement is four yields, okay? A stable tile with improvement is four yields. So that means the granary is now five yields Yields if we improve it. So we should always be improving the granary tiles, generally speaking. Of course, this is just an outline. You know, you'll learn your own style. You'll, you'll learn your own priorities once you kind of figure out the game better. But generally speaking, these become five yields with the exception of bananas, which are six which is insane. Um, these become five yield tiles. So it's more efficient for our city to be working them than a four yield stable. Similarly, farms and mines are the least important as they're only three total yields until, you know, civil service, in which case farms become four and chemistry in which farms, uh, mines become four. So just keep that in mind. Um, but it is vital to kind of get your gran so a couple of your granaries improved and then one hill tile, then more granaries. When your build queue kind of, you know, isn't as big anymore, improve your stone and then mines. Again, you're not going to have all these luxuries in each city. So, you know, maybe you don't have any granaries. Improve your stone and stable tiles, right? Like, but you should really have one hill and one hammer tile after you imp start improving some of these stone and stables. Luxury should always take precedent. You know, even if you're happy, going towards that natural golden age is very strong. So a general rule of thumb, and this should be intuitive, is what tiles do you want to work in your city? Right? I want to I personally want to work deer tiles and bison tiles all day. I am always going to be improving my deer and bison tiles first. Okay? Um, and then no stable horse is four yields while a granary, uh, deer and bison is five. So we should always be improving the deer and bison first. Okay. So that's just like how general tile priority is total yield is just net better. Um, of course we want to head towards food. I'm not saying you should improve all of your planes horses. You're not going to work them right? But you should definitely be prioritizing your, your granary tiles and luxury tiles when you can. Okay, so here's like a simple flow chart I made. Um, so let's back up. Uh, worker micro priorities. Are you happy? Or rather, are you going to be happy in the next four turns? If the answer is yes, you can potentially skip improving luxuries. Though I will say, 
Luxuries are always good to improve. You will never be wrong, realistically, for improving luxuries um, for the most part. There's some exceptions, but for the most part, um, you'll never go wrong improving luxuries. But let's say you're happy. You don't have any luxuries to improve. Do you have first ring chops? First ring chops are the highest tiles in the game. As we mentioned in previous episodes of uh, Learning Elect Mod, first ring chops drastically speed up any city. They speed up building workers and granaries, which snowball that city. It's vital to do those first ring chops as soon as possible. Um, so if you do, chop chop, get to it. But let's say you don't have any first ring chops to do because you already could chop them all because you're a good a good Civ player. Let's say you have a granary that's three turns remaining or four turns remaining. In this case, I would do a second ring chop, even if it's outside your borders, because that way the granary is going to finish at least, let's say it's five turns. Sorry. Let's say it's five turns away. You're building it right away. A second ring chop is going to finish that granary by the time it's finished. That's going to save at least um, two to three turns on the granary build, in which case you're getting a minimum of two food per turn the entire time that's up. So doing that chop makes up for the fact that you may have improved something to give it one food for a turn, right? Because the granary is going to give tiles food as well as two base food. So finishing buildings is a very good use of second ring chops and third ring chops and whatever. Um, but generally speaking, if you don't have a building finishing soon, I wouldn't chop a second ring until you have a building finishing kind of soon. And that's because it's not going to hit that break point, right? Civ's all about break points. When you finish the building, it's worth infinitely more than having it one turn away because you get the yields from finishing it. So let's say... Um, you're, you're finishing a building. You're not finishing a building soon, right? Let's say you're, you know, you just started a watermill or something. Are your build queues full or rather by the time you improve the tile, will your build queues be full? If they are not, let's say you're finishing this watermill in four or five turns, right? And maybe the chop won't matter because you have enough hammers. Okay. If your build queues are full or not, are not full, build, uh, improve a stone or stable tile. We want to fill those build queues, even if improving a stone is less efficient than improving the deer, right? It's better to get the stone up because then it fills our build queue with one of the best buildings in the game. Similarly, if we need, if we have a number of stable tiles, improving a stable tile is more important than improving a granary because we want to be able to build that stable as soon as possible. And let's say our build queues are are like completely full. What do we do? It's like a new city. We follow the tile priority list. Okay. So let's just. I'm gonna sh show you a quick example in this game. I you know I just loaded this like ten minutes ago. What is going through my head when I'm working these tiles? Okay. The first thing I did is I chopped this first ring chop. Right. I chopped out a worker. So I just started a granary's turn. Uh, just started a settler's turn fifteen or fourteen. This is this is fine. This is like a tradition game. I got a culture rune. Um, why why are my workers here? Well, one worker went from this deer down to this horse and instantly improved. The next tile went from inside the city to the deer. Why am I improving? Why am I chopping this deer rather than say improving the iron or you know? In improving the perfume or something the reason i'm doing this is because first it's a first ring chop but secondly this turns this into a hill tile and i want to be working all hill tiles as i build settlers so not only it's twofold for hill deer and that's why hill deer are so valuable in the early game because they turn into hill tiles but they help you grow in the beginning they're phenomenal assets okay so let's keep going I have a couple of things I wanted to showcase here. Um, so, okay, here. Let's say Hill Deer is good, but coffee actually gives the same yield, right? It's, it's one food, two hammers, and three gold. So it's actually just better than a Hill Deer. So why am I improving this horse? Well, I improve the horse for one turn because I'm on the way to the coffee tile, okay? So when you're... Let's say I'm walking to this oasis. 
it's going to consume two movement regardless, right? And let's say I want to improve, let's say I want to improve this horse tile, right? What's the best way to get there? The best way to get there, I guess, is just to go straight there, right? No. If we want to improve the horse, we're going to use the same amount of actions in two turns as if we walk straight there and press improve, or we walk to coffee, improve, and then walk to horse and improve. Does that make sense? So I can walk to the coffee, improve this tile, and then head to the horse tile. And it will, as it, I essentially got a free action of improving this coffee. Now this might not seem like a big deal, but I can assure you this is a massive deal. This is how you generate a lot of free movement, quote unquote, free movement with your workers. So that was just a sake, um, for sake of example, I don't want to improve this horse tile. I'm going to keep improving this previous horse tile, but I do want to prep this coffee tile. As I mentioned, this is gold, right? This is strictly better than improving this sheep, uh, than working this sheep tile. So we're going to work that sheep tile and we're going to prep a steel, a worker steel for this city um, down here. All right, so I'm going to go for legalism. Finish this chop. Okay. Work my coffee. Where my, whenever I finish any worker actions, or even before I even start them, honestly, I should be talk, asking myself, what is this worker going to do next, right? I knew that there was a 50-50 chance it grew to either coffee. If it grew to the wrong one, I buy the other. So I knew as soon as I finished this deer, I either want to go right here to chop this and then improve the iron, or I go to the coffee. In this case, it grew to coffee, but I don't really want to work the coffee right now. I kind of want to just get these settlers out. So in this case, I'm actually going to go here and chop. That way, this worker, when it's finished, it's action can go up and improve this coffee. So this is something called bouncing workers. So this worker was originally on the horse. It was working the horse. Now it's on the coffee. Let's bring it back to the horse, work the horse, and this worker can pick up where that one left off. We're synchronizing all of our worker movements here. And it's going, it, it really becomes the make or break thing when you're like, when you're like learning to sim. This is such a fundamentally key aspect of the game is how to properly use these workers can forever change your early game it can forever teach you how to sim better right i can't stress how important this kind of thing is okay so we're finishing this horse we're gonna improve this coffee now finish this chop and we're gonna go to the iron right we're working all of the tiles we want to be working working as much hammers as we possibly can as we're building settlers. Let's flicker this, make sure it's not over here. Okay, cool. Am I gonna be unhappy if I settle? Well, I'm gonna be settling on this coffee as I wanna get that coconut up there. And it doesn't look like Washington has a trade. If this is a multiplayer game, I need happiness. Okay, that was a misclick. But I want to improve perfume here, right? So I missed a turn. I missed one full turn of worker action. So my, my perfume is now coming up one turn late because I misclicked that. That's a really big deal. Um, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but that really does matter. So I'm gonna improve this perfume now. Move this over here. That's gonna actually help clear the, um, the camp for me. All right, let's rework these tiles. More hammers, I mean more gold, just from working the essentially the same exact tile I was before. And let's go over here to settle this one and then we'll bring one down here. Okay, another settler. And worker, as always. Two first ring chops is very strong. Now, what do, what th this, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to leave the, leave the realm of worker micro and we're kind of entering the realm of um, just macro ideas and kind of thinking ahead and doing these kinds of plannings. 
but I, I believe they're all kind of intertwined, right? So this work can move up here, one turn, improve this coffee, and then go chop, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Always take land to delete. Then we can work towards whatever wonder we want. Let's say it's hanging this game for whatever reason. All right. Remember, as I said, we moved off this deer. We're going to improve this for one turn. And then we're going to start chopping because we want to make sure that we're getting those workers out as soon as possible. Okay. Chop, chop. And let's move this over here. And I'm going to look to buy, I don't think I'll be able to buy that silver tile. Silver, uh, desert tiles are usually really expensive. And now I can go improve this other, this, the same coffee with the previous worker. As I know, and this is all where thinking ahead comes in, how, thinking ahead comes in. As I know, Ormus is likely to get another worker for me. Where is that worker going to go? Well, I'm going to probably steal it off the ivory. It's going to move onto here next, then here, then here, and then it can improve this horse tile. So I don't want to waste worker movement going over to this horse tile when I could improve something like this deer or this, or this coffee, right? It's all about understanding where your workers are coming from and where they can go next, okay? Um, one last thing, you know, I've kind of talked for a while. I think my point has kind of come across. Um, yeah, these tiles are so expensive. Um, yep, there it is. This is not a tradition map, by the way. This is 100% liberty, but, you know, we're just kind of just showing worker micro and worker micro is most important on tradition. Um, so right here, because we improved these tiles, we're able to not starve. So I can just start working this tile and still I won't starve because all of my other tiles are actually improved enough, which is great. And if I had more workers or maybe, you know, um, more like an earlier worker seal or something, maybe I'd have my bison improved and I could work that instead. Okay, so we're going to go worker again. And then I hope I, I'm going to, I assume this is all, you know, making sense. Um, chop that. Worker done. And then, frankly, I should have shot, moved here, and then shot, but um, it's okay, actually. And then, like, th this is little things. Like, I, I'm probably one of the best players, and I'm c always making these kind of mistakes. Uh, a really good friend of mine always says, like, a perfect game of Civ has never been played. So, um, making these kind of small errors is not uncommon and frankly it's expected um no one can play a perfect game regardless okay so let's just emulate a couple trades just so i'm not unhappy anymore so we'll emulate two trades Let's move this back just so I can clear this camp. And move this for the horse, as I can now work the horse in this city. All right, see the yields of this tile? Like, I don't wanna be working this coffee tile. I wanna be working the bison, right? So I need to now think, okay, how can I go improve that bison? This is why early workers are so crucial and why even after you finish a granary, you should still be looking to build a worker in most cases. So right there, I'm just kind of playing with the barb. Um, trying to get him to kind of comply with me. 
ideally we do these two first ring chops and then start a granary but you know barbarians are, are a problem they always will be okay so i think this makes sense i want to show one concept that i see a lot of people and even some experienced players not do whether it be from laziness or or what what have you um and it's a concept in roading right one thing you can do when you're going about a road is counting the tiles it's going to take to road okay so i see it takes four tiles to road here right four tiles means that it's going to take eight total actions to finish a road which means i can finish a road in two turns right it'll take i as in when the road when one of the roads is complete by the time it's finished it'll only be two turns before the road is completely finished so let me explain so i'm pre-roading here and i'm not going to finish this road right instead i'm going to go and move down and i'm going to road there If we had that first ring chop, this worker would have been finished, right? So, some silly stuff like that. All right, so right here, I have one, one, one turn of improvement into this perfume, one turn of improvement into this tile, one turn of improvement into this tile, and now one turn of improvement into this tile. Because I started these at a different time, I know that if I finish this road, it'll cost me one GPT. But I can just improve this pasture while I wait, right? Again, this might seem like a small thing, but I can promise you it does add up and it really does go a long way. Okay, so now I can finish this pasture or I can start working on this pasture. Now I can finish these two roads. So now my GPT just dropped by six, right? or it just dropped by two so now on the following turn on the following turn I'm going to finish this road because I already pre-roaded the other two, right? Now this is finished. It says it's minus five now, even because it's giving minus four from this, but it's not accounting for the generate gold generation you get from the city connection itself, which means I will actually be positive GPT by the end of this turn. And we'll show you here. And we're going to feed cap. All right. So even though we just finished the road, let's see if the money. So our GPT just um, dropped or it increased by three, right? So we are at 95 and then we dropped to 92 or instead of the original, we should have went down to 90. So this road is generating us money. Um, if the worker, if we didn't finish the road, and let's say we did like, we only used a single road to, we use, only use a single worker to make a road, which I see players do all the time, that would have costed us over, that could have costed us over 15 gold, right? But instead it only costed us, it actually, it only costed us one gold or essentially two gold because we made the money back, right? And then this is going to, this, this is going to scale, um, scale up really really nicely for us um when we get uh when when these cities grow because you know city connections work like that okay so i think i'm going to end it here but 
what I want you to think about, and especially when you're watching streams and watching other people play, look how they're using their workers. Look how every action, there's a next step for the worker, right? These workers are all here. What do you think they're doing next? They're going to road to Zagreb, right? They're going to fix, fix this bison tile that's now getting pillaged, right? Like, so everything kind of is working together and all of the workers kind of have fixed movements that has already been thought out, right? Why is this improving this useless tile? Um, well, it's because I need the happiness because I'm about to go unhappy, right? Like, and, of, and maybe, you know, like, of course, like this might seem obvious, but I want you to watch your worker movements when you're playing your game. Like just think actively think about it more because I can assure you most players aren't this, you know, thoughtful when they're doing these kind of worker movements and it's costing them in this case of, uh, in the case of roads, a lot of money. And additionally, it's costing, um, it's just making their sim substantially worse than it could be. Um, so, you know, this is the benefit of doing worker, of proper worker actions. You're saving a ton of time. And not only that, you're improving your tiles substantially faster, which is making your cities grow and finish buildings and everything substantially faster than they normally would. So, you know, I, I didn't want to make this that long of a video. It's 30 minutes. I guess this is what happens when you play Civ and you talk about Civ. But, you know, I hope this con these concepts make sense where don't, first of all, never, never do worker movements and worker actions when you're not thinking about it. Instead, Try to be more thoughtful about what you're doing with your workers, where they're going next, what they're doing after the thing they're doing after that, right? Have a plan that's thought out and then you'll be much better off. So with that, um, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're gonna cover um, social policies. And actually, I think we're gonna do city micro, um, like how to micro your cities properly and better. But yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned.